Hey everyone, this is Mr. Phil, and this tutorial presents an alternative approach to odometry. One that combines the ability to accurately measure how the robot's moving with simple straight line motions. For some background, a lot of FTC teams, especially rookies or teams without a strong software mentorship, struggle with autonomous programming. As more teams adopt Omni holonomic drives, like Mechanum and XDrive, the problem has only grown these drives don't act predictably, often driving off course, so it's hard to tell exactly where the robot's going in autonomous just by watching what the driven wheels are doing. Non-powered follower wheels were added to robots to measure the actual motion across the field, and so FTC odometry was born. But now teams have to figure out how to use this new odometry input. If teams have access to one or more adventurous programmers, they can try using some of the more advanced odometry tools like Roadrunner or Meep Meep. These tools treat the field as an XY coordinate grid and can plan and execute complex curved motions. But these tools have a steep learning curve and they rely on some sophisticated testing so they don't always lead to success. I think something simpler is needed. So this tutorial is gonna take a different approach. I'll first identify the essential needs of a typical autonomous program and then propose a simplified odometry approach to provide those core needs. Along the way, I'll show how some parts of this code can be used uh, to assist teleop driving so the robot acts in a more predictable fashion. So what are the needs of autonomous? Well, anyone who's been on a first LEGO League team knows that sophisticated autonomous routines can be created using just a handful of core driving blocks. A robot that can turn accurately and travel a set distance in a straight line can often achieve great things. My goal is to provide three basic driving commands that can be used to assemble similar autonomous motions for FTC. There will be a drive command, a strafe command, and a turn command. We'll use the built-in IMU to provide a stable heading reference, and odometry pods will be used to accurately measure distances. This approach will enable precise straight line motions by eliminating omni drive heading drift. As a bonus, the elements used to implement these commands will also be useful for maintaining a stable heading during teleop, greatly improving the drivability of most omni drives, especially when strafing. Since every robot's different, there will still be a handful of drive constants that will need to be tweaked to get optimal performance from your robot, but these will all be in a centralized location in the code. Caveats. To make this tutorial succinct, I've made some assumptions to simplify the code. These are not deal breakers, they just mean that if you have a different setup, you may need to tweak the code to account for your differences. But if you can live with my caveats, you'll be able to use this code directly. Number one, the code assumes a basic mechanism drive with four motors with encoders attached. Personally, I prefer to have all four motors and encoders attached to the control hub. The encoders on the drive motors are not used for odometry, but they enable the motors to be running closed loop speed mode rather than open loop power mode. This provides good motor control at slow speeds and overcomes any friction or differences between the four drive wheels. I recommend this approach on all drive trains. Two, the code provides three basic motions that can be used to implement an autonomous task. These are drive, strafe, and turn to. Drive performs a straight line motion for a set distance in the forward or backwards direction. The robot's heading is kept locked based on the last turn. Strafe performs a straight line motion for a set distance in the left-right direction. The robot's heading is kept locked based on the last turn. And finally, turn to will rotate the robot to point in a new direction. The requested heading is an absolute value based on the robot's last heading reset. This is in contrast to a relative turn based on the current heading. The robot's heading can be reset at any time, but it's typically only done at the start of auto. Caveat number three. The code assumes that there are two odometry pods that are each connected to dedicated encoder inputs. This means that the corresponding motor channels are not used. However, it is possible to have independent motors and encoders running on the same channel, but the motors must be run in run without encoder mode at all times. Caveat number four. The odometry pods are configured to measure axial and lateral motion independently. This means that the axial pod is mounted facing front to back and the lateral pod is mounted facing left right. Ideally, the pods should measure their corresponding motion without being affected by stray robot rotations. This means that the axial pod should be on the robot center line 
in front of or behind the center of rotation of the robot. And the lateral pod should be to the right or left of the center of rotation. Ultimately, the autonomous control should be keeping the robot stable heading, so the actual positions of the pod should not be a factor. But it never hurts to make the software's task easier. Caveat number five. The code must be configured to assure that the motor and encoder directions are set such that a forward drive is positive and that a left strafe is positive. The end user must perform some basic initial driving tests to ensure that the correct DC motor set direction calls are made to achieve these requirements. So let's talk about the approach. As I mentioned earlier, there will be three main driving commands, each responsible for moving the robot in a certain way driving, strafing, turning. All of these motions are mutually exclusive, which means you can only do one at a time in my modified odometry example. The turn to command directs the robot to rotate to achieve a desired heading. Once a turn has been completed, the robot will maintain that heading until a new turn to command is issued. The drive command will move the robot either forward or backwards in a straight line without deviating sideways or changing its heading from the last turn to command. And the strafe command will move the robot either left or right, 90 degrees from the robot heading, without deviating forward or backwards, or changing its heading from the last turn to command. Underlying these commands are three proportional control loops. Each control loop is given a set point and is responsible for monitoring and controlling a single axis of motion, X, Y, or yaw. The IMU gyro provides a robot heading value which indicates exactly which way the robot's pointing. The yaw control loop can then use this heading to adjust the turning speed to achieve and maintain the desired heading set point. This is used while turning and driving straight in auto, and while driving straight in teleop. The two odometry pods are used to measure axial and lateral, x and y, distances traveled, and since these will be pure motions, each drive or strafe command can begin by clearing any accumulated movement and just use the corresponding control loops to maintain the desired motion. For example, when strafing, the lateral motion is used to determine the distance traveled, while the axial motion is used to measure and correct the deviation from a perfect line. So I want to repeat an earlier statement. There are a wide range of more sophisticated uses that could be made of the odometry inputs, but this tutorial is laser focused on providing the core requirements of an easy to use autonomous capability. And so any further enhancements are left to more sophisticated solutions that are explained elsewhere.